Hi guys and welcome back to Beauty Fortified. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sue and I make hair care, skin care and makeup videos for the more mature woman. And today I wanted to take you through my Revlon haul and we're going to do a try on and I'm going to let you know whether these products are mature skin approved. Now I have a very long and nostalgic association with the brand. Back in the day, going about back about 30 years, they were one of the only drugstore brands that were available in South Africa. So I cut my teeth on Revlon Colorstay and there were a lot of products that I used from the range. Now the Colorstay in particular has gone through a few evolutions. I stopped using it a good few years ago, but when I first used it, they had something that they called Softflex, which was in the formula. And it was absolutely brilliant at mopping up my oils and keeping my skin flawlessly matte. But that was a long time ago and my skin has changed a lot since then. So a couple of things that I got on the haul, I obviously picked up the Revlon Colorstay. I am in the shade True Beige and this is still the shade that seems to suit me the best. So that hasn't changed. I also picked up two blushes and these are fairly new to market. I've got one in the shade Marvelous, another in the shade Naughty Nude. So really quite excited about those. I also picked up a lipstick from the, I think it's the Super Lustrous range. Now I have a love affair with their lipsticks. One of my holy grails is one of their lipsticks called Rum Raisin. The one that I picked up is in the shade Bear It All. So I have had some really great success with their lipsticks. I also picked up a lip liner and this is in the shade Nude. I have been looking for a lip liner to replace my Clarins Rose Nude which was discontinued and so I've got some high hopes for this one. I also picked up another lip product. This is their new Matte Light Crayon and was really excited about these. They look really easy to use on the go and really nice and matte and then I picked up one of their quads now they have a good few color uh, colorways in in these particular quads they say that it's a new and improved formula and I got the one in midnight so it'll be interesting to see what those are like and then I also picked up one of these skin lights. Now these have been on the market for a long time, but I decided to bite the bullet and pick up one of these. I have read rave reviews about these online. They are supposed to be quite um, up there with kind of high end highlighters. So we're gonna see how that performs. I also picked up another one of the Revlon Sophia's mascaras. And I really love this. It is one of the best uh, drugstore mascaras that I have ever tried and then a couple of other products which are not part of the haul but which I really love and we're going to try on today the one is the Colorstay Skin Awaken Concealer and the other one is a powder that I use and love and that is the Revlon Candid Photo Ready so now on to the application I've prepped my skin, I have put on my sunscreen, so we're going to go right into the foundation. And I'm in the colour True Beige, and I'm going to just put a little pump of that on my hand. And on one side I'm going to go in with a sponge, and on the other side I'm going to go in with a brush. This shade looks pretty presentable to me, but is sort of on the warmish side but we'll see how that blends out so just patting it in with a damp sponge and it seems to be smoothing out really well applying really nicely it seems to have a kind of a satin finish so we'll see what it looks like once it's dried down, but definitely looks more on the satin side at this stage. And it's blending really, really well with the sponge. So really happy with that. And then I'm gonna take the rest and apply it on this side. And I'm just going to buff it in 
with a foundation brush. This is also working really well. Mm, it's quite emollient. Definitely is spreading quite well with the foundation brush. I seem to be getting a little bit more coverage on the side that I did with the sponge. So on the brush side, my pores are quite visible there. But I am going to powder down. So we'll leave that for now and we'll just see how it dries out. But definitely looking a little bit fuller in coverage on the sponge side. So they do say that this is a medium to full cover and does seem to fit the bill. So I'm quite happy with the foundation. I'm now going to go in with a concealer and I'm using the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awaken Concealer. I have done a review on this which I will leave down below and at the end of my video and I have really been quite impressed with this. So just putting on a couple of dabs. This is a kind of medium to full cover concealer, you could say. And it really does blend in beautifully. You do need to apply a little bit of eye cream or make sure that your under eyes are quite moisturized. But I find that um, I haven't been setting it with powder. I don't need to. And it does tend to stay all day. So that's quite nice. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of powder now. The foundation is still feeling a little bit tacky to the touch. But I'm just going to apply a light dusting of powder and I'm going in with the Revlon Photo Ready Candid. I really like this powder as well, especially for minimizing pores and helping to control my oils. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that on a powder brush and just going to tap a little bit onto my T-zone where I am particularly worried about my pores and also just lightly onto the rest of my face just to help to set the, the foundation and I'm also going to put a little bit on my eyelids my eyelids are quite oily so we're just going to apply a dab of that just to help with the oils and then I'm going to go on to the eyes and I'm going in with the Moonlit Quad and these are really beautiful shadows. They are quite buttery, but they all seem to have a little bit of a, a shine to them. So there I've swatched them. The lightest highlight shade is there. Then you have the gold, which doesn't really show up that much. Then you have the deep outer corner color, and then you have the lid and crease shade. So I didn't realize that none of these were actually matte when I picked this up in the store. And I do prefer a little bit of a matte shadow for the crease, but we're going to use this for today and we're going to see how it fares. So I'm going in with this top kind of taupey color. And I'm going to take that on a blending brush. And there's quite a lot of kickback, if you can call it that, when you dip your brush into the shadow. So I'm going to tap off the excess. And then I'm just going to go in onto the lid with this taupey shade. It really is giving a beautiful wash of color. I'm just going to go on to the other lid before I go into the crease. But there is, there is a little bit of fallout with these, so you do need to just kind of tap your excess off the brush. And I'm just going to pat it in seems to work a little bit better but these this particular palette these are quite light I did expect them to be more intense I did swatch the pink the two pink palettes in the range which I swatched in store which were just absolutely stunning I wasn't able to swatch this palette in store and so I thought it would be quite similar in texture to the pinks the pinks just seemed 
quite creamy. I don't know if it was just because they're pinks. So I'm going to go in to the crease with this color. Just blending in circular motions just to give a little bit of definition to the crease. It is blending out quite beautifully. So the texture is really, really quite blendable. So it really is just a shame that there couldn't have been a mat in this quad. And I'm not sure if the other neutral quad has mats in it. It was quite difficult for me to see through the packaging in the store. They did look, well, one of them looked matte even under the lights. So that's quite interesting. So I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to go in with a blending brush and I'm just going to lightly blend out that crease shade just so that there's no obvious harsh line. And then I'm going to take a small eyeshadow brush just to gently line the lower lid. So I'm going in with a tiny brush just to give a little bit of definition to the lower lid and it is very light you could put a little bit of the darker shade under the lid as well obviously but I don't want to go in too dark so then for the darker shade I am going to apply that to the outer corner I'm not really going to worry with the gold shade it doesn't swatch very well at all and as for this highlighting shade they always seem to put a big white glob of highlighter in their quads and I'm not quite sure who would use that it's just too white and even as a shade for the inner corner I think it's just a little bit too white so just taking the darkest color and gently applying to the outer corner and this is applying really well as, as well. It's quite buttery and even this one does have a hint of shimmer but it's not really that apparent when you apply it to the outer corner. So that's the eyes done. I think I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to go in with a couple of coats of the Revlon Sophia's. And now on to the cheeks and I think I'm going to go in with the shade Movilis. It looks really, really pigmented and it does seem to kick up a little bit of powder as well when you swatch it. So there it is on my hand. It's a beautiful pink, quite a vivid pink color and it does seem to be quite pigmented. So. I'm going to take a little bit on my blush brush and I'm just going to tap off the excess. It is quite powdery. I see it is kicking up quite a bit of powder when I dip my brush into it. So it's not really a firm blush per se. So I'm just going to gently apply this and I can build up the color but I just don't want to go too overboard because it does seem to be quite highly pigmented. It is blending beautifully. It's very sheer. Although it is quite pigmented, the texture is quite sheer. So that is good news for more mature skin and people that have enlarged pores like me because the sheer of the blush, the better your pores are going to look. So it is giving quite a pop of color. I think I am just going to blend it down slightly. So I'm just going to take a powder brush, just kind of blend that out. So because it is so pigmented, it is quite difficult to get the perfect application. But I would rather have a more pigmented blush than a blush that doesn't have color payoff. So I guess there's a fine line. And I'm going to go in with these skin lights and I picked up the shade Daybreak Glimmer. I think this was the lightest if not the second lightest but it just looked absolutely beautiful 
and I'm just going to swatch it for you on my hand. I'm running out of space here. But there it is there. And you can see it really does pack quite a punch. And they say that these are not chalky, they're not glittery. They are supposed to be just superb for mature skin from what I've read on the website. So taking a highlighter brush, I'm just going to dab it into the highlight. And there's not a lot of kickback with these, which is good news. I'm just going to tap off the excess just in case. And I'm just going to gently apply that to my cheekbone. And wow, it is packing quite a punch, this. I'm just going to do the other side. And it really is giving... Quite a gleam to the skin. So we're going to see how this fares. It doesn't seem to be that finely milled, to be honest. Just looking at it um, in the context of my pores, but it really is giving a beautiful highlight. I think I might just blend that a little bit, just so it's not so glaring. But it really is very, very pretty. So before we go on to the lips, I'm just having a look at my skin. The foundation is definitely dried down now. I must say it um, is looking quite matte after I've applied the powder. And it all looks good. I wouldn't say that it is going a long way in terms of smoothing my skin. It's not doing anything out of the ordinary to smooth or disguise my texture at all so that's just an observation so i'm going to go in with a lipstick and i'm going to go in with this one this is the color stay matte light crayon and this is in the shade take flight and i swatched these in store and i was uber excited about them because they they like a big jumbo lip liner and they're supposed to be 30 percent lighter than other matte lipsticks so let's see how this one fares. So obviously no liner required. So this was a little bit lighter than I had anticipated, but in, in shade, but it really does feel light on the skin. It's very easy to apply being in the crayon format and um, it does give you a beautiful kind of matte lip so they do have quite a few other different shades and I just like this one because it was a kind of my lips but better shade you could apply a gloss over this but I'm gonna leave it like this for now so I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna come back in a few hours and we're just gonna go through everything we're gonna see how the eyeshadow performed how the foundation performed whether the blush is still on etc we're just going to see what a little bit of wear and tear does to the makeup. So I will be back in a bit. Hi guys, so I've had the makeup on for a good few hours now and I am ready to give you my thoughts. So what do I think about the foundation? It's definitely not as mattifying as I remember. I have had some oils peeking through throughout the day. I have had to blot once or twice. It is breaking up around my fine lines, around my nose, the fine lines around my mouth here as well. While it definitely hasn't exacerbated my pores or my texture, it hasn't really done anything to smooth them either. So it really is quite middle of the road when it comes to that. It's not going to be doing anything miraculous to your skin texture. It is fairly transfer proof. I really like that about it as well. And the shade match was a really good one for me. So I would give the foundation a 6 out of 10. Then in terms of the blush, the blush is really pretty. It has faded slightly, but they really are sheer. They're quite powdery, very pigmented. If you can get the balance right in your application and you can manage the pigmentation, I think they are really beautiful for mature skin. So this blush definitely doesn't exacerbate my pores. It just gives me a beautiful color and really sheer. So I would definitely say that the blush is mature skin approved. In terms of the highlighter, I really love this highlighter, but I do still find it a little bit chunky. It's not glittery. Um, 
I think when I say chunky, it's in the context of the texture of my skin. So I don't have perfect skin after all. And so I would have preferred something that was just a little bit more sheer. Um, I'm not quite sure how to describe that because you want the pop, but you also don't want a highlighter that's going to be sitting on top of your skin. And I think that was the big thing for me. It just kind of sits on top. And if you have perfect skin, then you're home and dry. But for somebody like me, I think you do need to blend it in slightly. It does take a little bit of blending to kind of get rid of the chunkiness. But having said that, it really is a beautiful highlighter. And I think if you can get this to make it work for the, the value for money is just out of this world, can't be beat. The eyeshadows, I'm not quite sure about. I think uh, I have seen a lot better from Revlon. I think that they do emphasize the texture on my eyelids just a little bit. I'm not quite sure about this formula. And when you apply, there is quite a lot of fallout as well. They're, they're quite powdery. They're creamy, but powdery at the same time. So they're a little bit of an anomaly like that. So I would be quite keen to try one of the other colorways and see how that performs. But not really blown away by the eyeshadow. So I think in this particular colorway, which is Moonlit, I think you could probably give that a miss. The mascara I love one of my drugstore holy grails and then the lip liner it stayed on really well throughout the day but it is quite drying you can see all my lip my actual lip lines coming through so I'm not talking about the lines above your lips because it doesn't bleed at all it's really really good so for mature skin definitely mature skin approved if you can get past the dryness or perhaps add a little bit of gloss that might make a little bit of difference to the product. So guys that is my take on my Revlon haul. Some of the things definitely mature skin approved, some not so much. Let me know if you've tried any of these products and what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment down below. I am going to leave you with a link to my video on the Revlon Awaken Concealer. It's a really good concealer, highly recommended. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.